Good morning, everybody. So I wanted to make the last video. Oh, hey, Lala. Coming in to talk about Land Run with Lala. Uh, the last portion is training. So we covered nutrition, we covered the actual race, and now training. And gravel, this really applies to any big gravel event that you're doing. You could apply it to maybe your road racing, if you road race the way, the way I do. Um, but really gravel, the big difference that we're all realizing about gravel is um, from road racing, there's really not much coasting. You know, even when you're in the group or you're behind somebody, it's less, you're not just chilling. You still gotta pedal this bike over gravel. You're going a little bit harder over the climbs. The normalized power was really high for land run for the 75 miles that I was in it. Um, and that should, your training should show the difference in that. So you need to be able to consistently pedal a bike for a really long time. Uh, one comment that the current collegiate time trial champion made to me was when he just won his first race of the year, man, I feel like it's those no coasting 10% rides you give me. And on the weekend, he'll just go out and I'll tell him, have your zone one time less than 10%. Continually pedal the bike. Don't coast. And if you go on a group ride, look at how much zone one time you have when you come back. It's crazy. It's probably 30%. So become efficient at pedaling a bike. And then use things like Sweet Spot, 93 to 94% FTP. We've talked about this a ton because it works. Um, start with 20 minute segments, go to 30 minutes, um, do two by 30 minutes, rest just five minutes in between, do one by 45 minutes, try to work up to an hour and a half straight of sweet spot. If you can do an hour and a half straight of sweet spot, you're gonna have a kick-ass gravel race. Now, people hear that and we get stuck in the trees and we hammer sweet spot. I'm gonna do sweet spot, sweet spot for six weeks and I'm gonna come out killing it read our blog about plateauing a lot of the plateau is stagnation sometimes you can't just continually do something and see improvement so the benefit of obviously growing as a cyclist and doing 25 minutes then 45 minutes then 2 by 30 minutes you're changing up the duration which sounds like not the biggest deal but it does if you just do 2 by 30 all the time I just it's not you're not gonna grow from that so not only change up the duration, but do sweet spot, also do some threshold. Do a little bit of 100%, 105%. Do some threshold bursts, because what if you get out on the course and it's a little hillier than you expected and you happen to find yourself in a group and they're a little bit stronger than you and you need to go slightly VO2 max to stay attached to the group. You know, if you're just doing sweet spot, it's not gonna get you to where you wanna go. Um, you're gonna fall a little bit short of where you could be. So you know, come out as your best. So um, if you've got endurance rides planned, you could do some tempo instead if you're short on time. But the sweet spot, the threshold, the threshold bursts, and then if you have time and it's not, and the intensity is not going to wreck your training schedule, I don't know everything else you have going on, do a little bit, little bit of VO2 max because it's just gonna make you sharper on that high-end stuff, especially if you're riding with people that are above your level. Um, so my training for Land Run 100 specifically, um, it wasn't a specific plan. Land Run was not an A race for me and I've got, it, it gravel though suits how I road race. So while I'm saying it's not an A race, I didn't have specific goals of like, all right, I'm gonna try and get in the break. I'm gonna try and, you know, I need to be able to hammer this for this long. Um, I'm looking more at some longer road events. Joe Martin, the road races are very long. I'm, I'm aggressive, so I find myself in breaks. I need to be able to ride for a long time, and if guys bridge up, still need to have some kick in there to help out my teammates that get a free ride. Um, so I was doing long sweet spot. I was doing some threshold. Um, the benefit of doing that, I could do some 60-minute benchmark tests, um, really kind of round out my power duration curve and get a sense of where I'm at for this time of year. If you've been kind of following along, I've been trying to push things out about a month and a half later than normal because of where Masters Nationals and some other big gravel events are laying on the calendar. And I've also wanted to try to not lose my motivation for competitive cycling by July. Um, so I've removed some local events that I would usually go to. 
um, being in Memphis, Tennessee with a team in Oklahoma and a friend in Nashville. I was kind of driving all over the place every weekend. I was never in Memphis. And at the end of the day, you need to have a normal life also off the bike. And I want to do things in Memphis. So, um, and that just means you can do longer training rides. So anyways, to that, that that's the kind of the training in a five minute video. Train to what the race is gonna have you do though. And I knew that the gravel race would be just on the pedals for a long period of time, hours at a time. Train it as much as you can. Um, work up your sweet spot as much as you can. Get up to two hours if you can do it. Um, you'll see some improvements in your FTP and you're gonna come out and crush your event. And uh, hey, give it your best shot. Uh, train smart and just don't stagnate. Don't do the same thing over and over again. All right, if you have any questions, reach out to us. We'll help you for free. It's kind of what we're doing. Starting conversations, evolving our IQ together as a community. See you guys later.